Okay, let's get working on our sailboat image. Again, we want to make a selection of our sailboat and remove our background. I've saved a selection for us to work with. If you want to go ahead and practice your selection skills, you can do that and just hit pause and then come back to the video once you have your selection made. Let's click select, load selection, and we want to choose under channel, we want to choose sailboat. We're going to click OK and you can see the selection of our sailboat actually has some pretty good detail. We see the railings are selected, we see we can still see the people, and we also can see a lot of the line. Okay, what we're going to do is on our layers panel is we're going to click the layer mask button to create a layer mask. So now we see the transparent behind it and we only have our sailboat selected by using our mask. So again, this is a non-destructive edit. So if we see when we take it to our CL image, we need more details of our boat, we can go ahead and correct it over there because we'll have our mask with it. Okay, let's go ahead and use our move tool and let's drag from our canvas, let's drag the sailboat to Seattle. When we see the Seattle image, we're going to pull our boat down and you can see the rectangle showing us the bounding area of our sailboat. I'm going to release and you'll notice that our boat is rather large. It's much bigger than our picture needs. And if we're looking at the perspective or our composition of our picture, you'll notice that if we actually have it up front here, we might want a larger boat, but the closer we get to the shoreline, the smaller our boat needs to be. So I'm going to kind of put it in the middle here. And I'm going to select Command T on my Mac or Control T on Windows to call it my free transform tool. At the top on our options panel, I'm going to actually click on the width and the height. I'm going to click on that little link tool to select it. And I'm going to change my width to 50%, which then will automatically change my height to 50% because I have the link activated. If I didn't have the link activated, then my image would only have changed the width, not the height. It would be distorted. I'm going to go ahead and press return or enter to commit to my 50% smaller and I'm going to relocate my sailboat here. So that actually looks pretty good and now I just need to improve the color of my sailboat so that it looks like it fits better into that skyline with Seattle. You can see Seattle's picture is a little brighter and I want to also adjust my sailboat to make it look like it's actually moving with the water. So I'll apply some transforms to that. Okay, now I want to add an adjustment layer that only affects my sailboat. I don't want it to change the clouds. I don't want to change Seattle. I just want to change the boat. So I'm going to click on my command key or control key and I'm going to click on the layer mask thumbnail for my sailboat to call up that selection. What that does is when I add an adjustment layer, it's going to apply the adjustment layer only to the selected area. So let's go ahead and select levels on my adjustments panel. That's the second one from the left on the top row. I'm going to click on that and it calls up my levels panel inside the properties panel. And what I'm going to click is I'm going to start with by clicking auto. Clicking auto didn't really brighten up my boat. It did improve it some, but not the whiteness that I need with the Seattle image. So let's first click on this warning box down here to reset my histogram. And then I want to adjust the slider tools. The one from the right is white and I can bring that in to brighten up my sailboat. The one on the left, I can bring that in also, and that helps with the contrast. Because I don't want to lose all my detail as I'm adjusting my colors. So just bring in this from the right. You can see I've brightened up my sailboat, and it's much whiter. I'm going to collapse that panel. And again, you'll notice that the levels that I've just applied, if I click on my visibility icon, you'll see that it's only applied to my boat, nothing else in my image. Let's go ahead and, again, make a selection. We can use either mask now for either a levels mask or a sailboat mask because it's the same selection. Again, command or control. And let's go and choose on our adjustments panel, let's select curves. Curves is the middle one on the top row. And just by dragging that little square along the line, we can adjust the brightness of our boat. And every monitor is different. What you see may be different than what I'm showing here and where my level winds up. So just click and drag and make the adjustments to what you see on your screen. And again, we can click and hide our eyeball to turn off our layer. You see that we've got the toggle layer visibility available also inside the properties panel. So we can turn off our curves and turn them back on to see what it's done. And here we can see it's actually made it quite bright and improved the whiteness of the sailboat. I'm going to collapse that down. And now what I want to do is I want to adjust the shape of my boat. 
Now, if I go back down to my sailboat and I do anything to my sailboat right now, I'm just gonna click and drag it and show you what happens. If I make any adjustments to my boat, I'm gonna lose those adjustment layers that have been created above it. So we move that back. So what I need to do is I need to combine those layers into a new layer on its own. So I'm gonna hide layer one, which has my clouds on it. I'm gonna hide the background layer, which is Seattle, and leave only the other three showing that involve my sailboat. I'm gonna click on the uppermost layer, curves one. I'm gonna combine these into a new layer all on its own. So I'm gonna press Command, Alt, Shift, and the letter E to create a separate layer. Now what you'll notice is if I hide the visibility icon on those other three layers, the sailboat, the levels, and the curves, I now have a layer with just my sailboat with those adjustments applied to it. So they've been merged into a separate layer. So again, on the Mac, that's Command, Option, Shift, E. And on Windows, that's Control, Alt, Shift, E to combine those into a separate layer. And again, it only worked on the ones that were visible. So that's why I turned off the background layer and layer one first. So I'm gonna go ahead and hide the visibility icons on the sailboat levels one and curves one. And I'm gonna now work on layer two at the very top. Let's go ahead and rename that. Remember, we could just double click on the name, layer two in the layers panel. And let's name that sailboat corrected. Okay, I've got my move tool. The letter V calls up my move tool. And under edit, I wanna to point to transform and I wanna select skew. Skew is gonna allow me to distort my sailboat to make it actually look like it's going in the water, not just laying on top of it. So I'm gonna to go to the top right and I'm gonna pull that box down and maybe the bottom left and I can start to change the direction of my boat and make it look like it's going along with the water. Let me go ahead and hit enter or return to see what that looks like. That actually looks pretty good. Again, I could go back to my command T if I think my boat's too large. Holding my shift key, I can resize the boat. Holding shift will constrain the proportions so that I don't make it too wide or too thin. And I think that looks a little bit better. So I've made it a little bit smaller by using control T and I used my skew to kind of distort the boat to make it look like it's going along in the water. Now the other thing I need to do is along the edge of the boat here at the bottom, you'll notice that we don't see any of those little white caps that you would normally see when the boat's going through the water. So what we're gonna do is we're going to use our clone stamp. The letter S will call that tool up. And on the options panel, instead of choosing current layer, I wanna choose all layers because I actually wanna use the layer at the very bottom, the background layer, that has the water in it from the Seattle picture. Now I can make a new layer to do this on so that if I make a mistake, I'm not actually damaging the boat. I'm just adding the white caps and the water on a layer above it. So let's go ahead and double click on layer two, the new layer I just created by clicking on the new layer icon at the bottom of the panel. And let's name this water. And with our clone stamp, let's make my brush a little bigger. Again, the right, square bracket will make it larger, the left square bracket smaller. I'm gonna hold my Alt key down or my Option key. You'll notice that the cursor changes when I hold my Alt or my Option key into a crosshair, and that's gonna create my selection. So now when I paint with my clone stamp, it's gonna take the area that I just selected and put it inside my brush. So you'll actually see here what's gonna be painted as I drag my brush. So I'm gonna click and I'm gonna drag, and I'm gonna start creating white caps. So Alt Option, I'm gonna get another one from over here. And I'm gonna continue adding some white caps. Now if I go too high on it, we can call up the eraser tool, the letter E on your keyboard, and we can erase the parts that have gone up on the boat too far, the blue area, because we really just want the white from the white caps. I'm gonna go back to my clone stamp tool, that's the letter S. I'm gonna get another area Alt or Option click, we see the crosshair and we click our mouse. Now I can click near my boat and I can add some more white caps. I can even get some from the back of the boat here that I brought over from the other image. Now if I clicked and dragged, instead of resampling constantly, 
I'm just going to get blue parts of the water because it won't keep reusing the same section that I've selected. It'll start to use the areas around it. So that looks pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and zoom in the letter Z so I can see my boat better. And I'm going to call it my eraser tool again with the letter E. And I'm going to erase the areas that I got too much blue on with my clone stamp. Okay, let me go back to zoom. Remember holding your option or your alt key and clicking will let me zoom back out. That's at 50%. Let me zoom in. That's at 100. And I probably want to clean up a little bit back here. So again, I'm going to press the S to get my clone stamp tool. I'm going to alt click to get my sample. Let me change my brush a little bit smaller again. I'll click over here. Again. And the letter E. And you can continue to clean this up. I'm going to back that up a little bit. Command Z or Control Z undoes my last action. Clean up some of that blue. Okay, let me double click on my hand to resize my image to fit into the screen. And that actually looks pretty good. Now we just need to play with the coloring just a little bit because the boat still looks a little too bright versus the background of the Seattle image.